Do you know what auto-animate is? Yeah. Do you, though? No, you have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should watch this, and I'll teach you how to do it. Okay, so we're going to auto-animate. Auto-animate. Hello, welcome back to another video. In this tutorial, we're gonna jump back into Adobe XD. We're gonna be doing some auto animation and it's gonna be for a timer counter. Hey guys, you're watching Dansky, the place to be to develop your creative skills. In this tutorial, as I say, we're gonna jump back into Adobe XD. We're gonna be using AutoAnimate to create a timer counter. So without further ado, we're gonna to jump to the screen now and I'll show you how to create this. Right here, so we're now in Adobe XD. You can see I have an artboard here, 500 pixels wide, 500 pixels high, and you can download the project files if you'd like to follow along with this particular design. So we're gonna animate this counter here, so the number five is gonna count down to zero, and we're gonna start this off with the play button. So first of all, we've got the layers panel open. If I just click on something, you can see we have a big mess of layers. We're gonna tidy this up because auto animating can get quite complicated, and if we have all our layers here, it makes sense to group together all the stuff that isn't going to be animated. So let's select the play button, and we'll right click and select group. And we can go up here, name this play dash button. And then what we can do is we can select all the other elements that aren't going to move. So I'm going to drag over these, hold shift and click to select or deselect elements that won't be moving. Right click and select group. And then I'm just going to call this group here fixed. Move this a bit further down towards the bottom and then just click here to lock that layer. And I just realized I'm in prototype mode, so I'm gonna switch back to design mode at the top. So this just makes sure that I don't select anything by mistake, and I've just kept this little bit over here moving, and then I've got the button here as well that's gonna kick off this whole animation. So next what we need to do is apply a mask to our numbers. So first of all, I'm just gonna change the color of this from white to black, just so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm gonna press return and type four, three, two, one, zero. So have these numbers in a column. They've actually, they've gone off the screen, but they are definitely still there. So we have these numbers in a column. Now we need to create a mask. So if I select the circle, that is going to be the mask. So everything outside the mask will be invisible, but the numbers inside will be visible. So if we press Command or Control D on the keyboard, that's D for donkey. And <laughs> it's always D for donkey. And I'm just going to move this shape up and we'll change the color to some crazy color, bright pink. It doesn't matter at this stage because the mask will be invisible. And then what I'm going to do is then bring this down and then just move this so it's above the numbers or the object you want to mask. It has to be on top. And I'm just going to call this mask and then select the circle or the mask and the numbers. And then if you're on PC, you're gonna right click and you should have the mask shape option. On a Mac, you're gonna go up to object, down to mask with shape and you'll find it there. So slightly different location between Mac and PC. Mask it with the shape and there we go. Now it doesn't look any different, but when we come to animate it in a moment, the numbers that are outside of the circle or our mask, they will be invisible. So now I can change this back from black, back to white. There we go. We've, uh, have we grouped our button? Yes, we've grouped our play button, so we're ready to start auto animating. Nearly, almost. So what we're gonna do is select the artboard. Again, press Command or Control D, duplicates the selected object. We'll go one, two, three, four, five. And it's put them in a very strange shape. I have no idea why it's done that but I'm gonna have these run in a straight line because I like lines. I mean, who doesn't like lines, right? And I'm gonna double click on the artboard name and just name these in sequence as well. So we'll go all the way from five down to zero. And we need to go through and change the number. So now we've set up the mask, we can double click to go inside the mask group, select the numbers and move them up. And I'm just gonna zoom in a bit more Maybe use the arrow keys just to make sure they're perfectly in place. We don't want them to be a little bit wonky or anything. 
So double click to go inside the mask group, adjust the counter, double click, adjust the counter again, double click, sorry this bit is a little bit repetitive, there we go, number one, and last of all, we're nearly there, we're going to go zero, okay. So we've set up the artwork on all of our artboards. Now we need to animate this. So at the beginning on the first artboard, we're gonna have the play button visible. And then as we go through the other artboards, the play button will be invisible and it will just play on a timer. So let's remove this here. You can select this and press delete or backspace on the keyboard to remove that play button. And then on the last board, the play button will be visible again and you can start the whole process all the way from the beginning. Rightio. Rightio then. So let's switch over back into prototype mode. So we're going to click on our button, drag the blue tab to the next artboard. Now this is going to be a tap trigger with the action as an auto animate. And I like to have the easing as wind up. It has like a nice little bounce before the animation plays out. But I definitely encourage you to try some other types of easing. You can mess around with the duration, but I'm going to go with half a second here. So once it gets to this next artboard, there's no button to move it on to the next one. So we need to set up a time delay. And we can do that by selecting the artboard itself and just dragging that to the next one. And you can see here, I've done this already. So you can change it from a tap to a time delay. Now I'm going to set the delay as half a second and the duration of the wind up to half a second as well. So 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 equals one whole second. So the counter will actually count seconds in real time. Now you can set the time delay to zero and then you can have the duration set to one, but I just like that little pause where it shows the number before it moves on. So it has to add up to a second, whichever way you do it. So there we go, it's gonna move on. And we do the same again, auto animate will remember the last settings that we used. So we can just, we can ride these same settings all the way to the very end. And then once it hits this one here, we have the timer set to zero. What we can do is link our play button. If I just zoom out, we can link that all the way back to the second artboard, the artboard labeled four. So we don't want to go all the way back to the beginning. Wait, no, yes we do. We wanna go all the way back to the beginning. There we go. So we'll go back to the beginning and it will be able to play that animation out again. So let's just click play in the top right corner. We'll see how this looks. So we click play and the timer counts down. Okay, so the animation's working. It's always a good start when the, uh, the auto animate animation works. So we'll jump back into it now. That button there links all the way back to the first one. So if I play that again, there we go. So the button fades out, it counts down, and then the button fades back in. And then it goes all the way back to five, which is really, really nice. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just add a little bit of uh, magic to the button. So it fades out slightly differently. So let's just jump back into design mode. Now, instead of this just fading out as it is, we can do something a bit more creative. And we can go edit, copy, select the next artboard and go edit and paste. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scale this towards the center. You can scale towards the center by holding Alt and Option while you're scaling, or Alt or Option. And I'm also going to rotate this by 360 degrees. So it's gonna do like a full circle. And if I drop the opacity down to zero, what it's gonna do is as it transitions to this artboard, it will shrink, rotate, and disappear. And what I'm gonna do is actually select this here, and then go over to this artboard, and then paste it on this one as well. So when it gets to this artboard, it will start small and faded, and then it will come back up in size. So it's just adding a little bit more interest, a bit more magic to a transition, just making it a little bit more interesting. So we'll go and play through this again. We can click play, 
and you can see the animation plays out, the play button disappears, the timer counts down and then it comes back in. And we can click play again and that takes us all the way back to the beginning. And there we go. So that's how to create a timer counter all in Adobe XD. Now remember, if you'd like to follow along, the project files are in the description. And if you have any questions or comments, you can pop those down there as well. But as always, like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time. Still down here guys, I'm under the table.